Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be checking out the Vision 5 2 board from Star 5 with the RISC 5 CPU. So let's get started. Now, I do want to thank Elecro for sending this over to me today for review. I've worked with them plenty of times in the past with other products before. And I do really appreciate that they sent this over to me because it's a board that I actually wanted to check out. Uh, it, particularly the uh, RISC-V CPU that I wanted to check out. Now, just like its counterpart ARM, it can run Linux operating systems like Debian. You're getting like almost a full-fledged computer just running one of these. Now today we're going to particularly be checking out the Vision 5 2 and it's got a lot of things going on with it right now so let's check it out. To start off as far as connections go you have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, four USB 3.0s right over here, you have HDMI and then two gigabit ethernet ports. Now off to the side you have your fan connector and then a CSI connector for cameras and it's two lanes so you could do 1080 30 frames per second. Now up to the top you have your USB-C for power delivery, your reset button and also your 40 pin GPIO. Now off to the side you do have a power over ethernet if you do get the module so you can power this over the ethernet which is pretty cool. Now onto the side, you have two DSi ports right over here. One, which is a two lane that allows for 1080, 30 frames per second. And the other one is a four lane, which allows for 2K, 30 frames per second. Now on the top, you do have this little switch connector right over here that you can set the boot modes from EMMC, uh, SD card, or uh, M.2. Now on the other side of this, you do have your M.2 right over here your EMMC, and then your SD card. Now, as far as the specs go, you do have a RISC-V JH7110 CPU, which is a quad card that can go up to 1.5 gigahertz. Now, this board has four gigs of RAM, but you can get this board with eight gigs of RAM. So it depends on what you need. And as far as the operating system that I'm running right now is Debian and it's experimental Debian. So uh, your mileage may vary on this, but you can get other operating systems like BuildRoot. And I did see some inkling of Android coming into this guy. Um, there was nothing that I could download to get this flash to Android, but it is, I do see it in its category and in its future. So eventually maybe the RISC-5 will be getting a, a Android operating system. But for now, uh, we are gonna be testing the Debian operating system. As far as the power goes, it is a little bit hungry on this board. Um, I do have 12 volts going to it right now through the USB-C power delivery cord. As you can see from this graph, as soon as it boots up, it goes all the way up to 0.5 amps, which is, and once it's done booting up, it'll come back down to about like 0.3 amps at four watts, right around that area and kind of hovers until you log in again. And then it'll jump back up to when it was trying to power up, which is about like 0.5 amps. Now, after it loads into the desktop, obviously you have these little spikes all over the place. But now when I try to do a benchmark, which uses the full utilization of the quad cores, you can see it goes all the way up. I've actually seen it go to 0.6 amps. And as you can see, it is a little bit power hungry doing the benchmark. Even on idle, I think it's a little bit um, heavy on the power usage because it is sitting at 0.3 amps at four watts, just idling and doing nothing. So it is a little bit high on my end as I experiment with the power. All right, so here we are at the desktop of the uh, Vision 5 and we are running Debian with GNOME. And they did have a script that you could actually install all this stuff. So this was installed through a script, uh, which is VLC media player and a bunch of other office stuff that you can actually operate. Now checking this out, let's see if I can pull up into a terminal. I'm going to show you NeoFetch. And it is currently running at star five, kernel 5.15, uh, 1080 screen. And the specs are four cores with 1.5 gigahertz. And just booting up runs about 528 megabytes of RAM. Now I am running Debian Bookworm, so it's pretty recent. It's not too bad, but I did run into issues already. As far as like filming this video, the first boot, it already froze on me. So it does have those hiccups where it'll freeze on me or drop out of the desktop as I'm using it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with it, but they did say the Debian was experimental, so it could run into little issues like that. I wouldn't rely on this for any production use, I could say. This is definitely for testing. Now, as far as um, GL Gears, um, GLX Gear, GLX Gears, uh, it does run. So you are able to get some sort of um, graphical usage out of it. Now it doesn't run particularly fast. You can see just GLX gears normally just pins the stop because it's not really running much graphical stuff, but even here is only doing 28 frames per second. Now, if I run something a little bit more intensive like GL Mark 
two with the little horse like this, this only could run about four frames per second. So it's really not that fast. And it's running on an 800 by 600 window. Able to do it is already an accomplishment in itself. So it's not too bad as far as getting things to work because we were at a point before where we couldn't even get GL to work. So we're at a it, we're at a point where it does work, which is pretty good. Now, as far as benchmarks go, I did run a quick benchmark on this, uh, which is a seven zip benchmark, and I'm going to compare this to the Raspberry Pi. And you can see it's actually faster than Raspberry Pi 2 Zero W, but slower than the Raspberry Pi 4. So it's not overly fast as far as benchmarks go, but it is able to do some processing power. Now, jumping into some browser things, I'm going to run uh, Chromium. And this is one of the ones that it installs with the package. So I'm going to show you um, what I mean. If I head over to downloads, uh, they have a thing called Debian pack. I'm going to hit continue on these because I don't have a key ring. So I'm just going to let this go. But they do have something called Debian pack, which you could download from their website. And it just runs a script with all their stuff that's in there, like Misa Debs, Gnome Control Center, FFmpeg, and stuff like that. So it does have some stuff that is pre-compiled that is being that you are able to use with the RISC-V CPU. Now, I did run a speed test, and this is right directly to my NAS, which has a 10 gigabit connection. And when I run start on this, it actually is not able to do the full speed of the gigabit. And I don't know exactly what's going on with it. This should be at, like, at least 1,000, but it's running only at 700. Same goes for upload. The upload is not particularly as fast as it should be. So I wasn't able to get the full speed out of the gigabit ethernet uh, cards on this. And there we have it. Download is about 704, which should be close to 1000. And upload is only 400, which should be much higher than that. Now jumping over to YouTube, we're going to play a quick video. And this is, I'm not speeding this up, so you can see how it's loading everything, which takes a little bit of time even loading on their compiled version of Chromium. And still, nothing's loaded yet, and it's been like about a couple of seconds. And I am going to start typing in here for Nova Spirit Tech. And there we have it. This is my latest video that we have, Much ha must have Proxmox mods. Still loading. It works. I mean, the video runs, but you could still see it's dropping frames, even if I don't have Geeks for Nerd coming up. I'm going to skip this. And you could see video playback is not perfect. Now I'm going to copy this link. And it's still loading. Like if I drop this down to uh, more, it's at 720 right now. If I drop this down to maybe 360. Which allows you to pass Yeah, that's able to play. But you can still see it's kind of like skipping frames. So it's not perfect. I'm going to jump over to Firefox, which is something I ended up installing. And I'll close this one in the background. And today I want to show you guys a really cool mod. That so it seems to play a little bit better on Firefox itself, uh, even though nothing's loaded right now, Let's but it seems to be working. Now I personally do a lot of I'm going to change the setting over to and a lot of Docker stuff. So if you guys are interested in seeing more Proxmox stuff, uh, let me know down in the comments below. But I'm going to change the setting over from 480 to 720. That's where we were have, having issues in Chromium, And see if it would even play on this. But it seems to be able to play 480 decently well, better than Chromium. 
Now the recent mod that I found for Proxima, and there we have it. I mean, it's struggling. All my VM testing stuff like that, but I have it on play. I switched um quality, and it's still having some issues trying to play my video. Again, I'm not particularly mad about this, but it seems to play like I could show, but it is like pausing at mid points and stuff like that. So it kind of still has issues playing videos, uh, even with Firefox. But I think it seems to be doing better with Firefox, even though it does doesn't have the GL acceleration compared to what I think their Chromium is built with, but it works a little bit better on, on Firefox than it does on Chromium. Anyway, that's about it for testing. I'm not going to go too in depth with it because, again, this operating system is still buggy. I've, I've had times where it drops me out and I could be doing something and it'll just kick me out or uh, sometimes it'll just hang completely and I have issues with it. So until something better comes along the way. Um, that's that's about it now that is it for me guys i was particularly interested in checking out the uh risk 5 cpus because it's it's up and coming it's still in its infancy there's still a lot of tweaking that needs to be done just to get it to where we want it to be but being that it's an open source cpu uh, you could actually grab one of these and install it into something that you're uh, probably playing a project with and the community starting to grow bigger and bigger um, I could definitely see these into the future, but will it replace ARM CPUs? Um, answer is, as of right now in this condition, it won't, just because of how underwhelming it is right now uh, as far as the software goes. So until the software catches up with the CPU to make everything a lot smoother and work a lot better, um, it's not really going to be able to replace ARM. You can use this to replace some appliances that you have an older Raspberry Pi 2 or Raspberry Pi 1 with, but in, in short, it is not as fast as Raspberry Pi 4. So as far as performance goes, it's not there yet. Like I said, I did want to grab one of these because I do see a lot of things coming for this and I do want to be able to test uh, RISC-V um, softwares and RISC-V uh, operating systems as they come along. So I am going to be playing around with this down the road. But for now, that is it for me. Now, if you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. I am still learning about RISC-V, so I'm not particularly fully knowledgeable about what this can do but i am willing to learn and if you guys are new to the channel consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and i say my nerd cave hack till it hurts